Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. Authorities in North Dakota on Monday dropped a rioting charge against journalist Amy Goodman, but hundreds of others continue to face charges for taking part in, documenting, or even bearing witness to the growing resistance to the Dakota Access Pipeline. Another media professional, Emmy Award-winning filmmaker, Dea Schlossberg, was charged with three felony counts for covering a protest. She could face up to 45 years in jail. Four journalists with independent media outlet Unicorn Riot are also facing charges. Last Monday, 27 people were arrested, including our next guest, who was an alder person on the Madison, Wisconsin Common Council. After her arrest, the Dane County Sheriff withdrew 13 law enforcement personnel from North Dakota. Well, now joining us to discuss all of this is alder person Rebecca Kemble. She's also a legal observer to the Dakota Access Pipeline. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Jaisal. Jaisal, good to be here. So you went to Standing Rock to deliver your city's, city of Madison's resolution in solidarity with the Standing Rock's resistance to, and uh, to the tribal chairman. Um, so you were arrested last Monday, charged with the most severe counts out of anyone of the 27 you were arrest with, arrested with, uh, destruction of evidence, resisting arrest, inciting a riot, and criminal trespass. Give us your response. Okay, well, first of all, they weren't the most severe um, counts. They were the largest number of counts. There were people on another site who had locked themselves down to equipment who are facing felonies. Um, all of the my charges are varying levels of misdemeanors. Um, so, yes, I went there. Um, our Common Council, Madison Common Council, passed unanimously passed a resolution in solidarity uh, with the indigenous resistance to the Dakota Access Pipeline. It's a very long um, resolution that details our acknowledgement of our own city being located on the traditional homelands of the Ho-Chunk people and their ancestors, of our, have our we as a community having passed ordinances and laws protecting sacred sites, uh, of we as a community understanding the value of water. We're located in between two lakes, um, and there are larger lakes around us in the city, and our understanding and um, support of government-to-government -government relationships um, with the tribes. So um, the people in our community know how important all of these things are, know how important um, clean water is and uh, tribes' sovereignty um, per the treaties are. So I um, was taking a personal vacation time to drive out there with my husband and my dog um, to, I attended an uncle's birthday party in the Twin Cities, and then we moved on in North Dakota. Um, my intention was to deliver the formal piece of parchment that had been framed and signed by the mayor to Standing Rock Sioux Tribal Chairman David Archambault II. Um, the first morning, we arrived there Sunday night. Monday morning, early in the morning, there was a, uh, a pipe prayer ceremony scheduled at the confluence of the Cannonball and Missouri Rivers. And um, I attended that ceremony. Um, I, I wanted to go out there in person. Um, I didn't want to just mail this resolution. I wanted to have my physical presence there, my spiritual presence there, my emotional and social presence there to really um, feel and feel what was happening and let people know that our city, from the heart, that our city is in support of them and their rights. Um, and and. Um, starting the day in prayer in traditional pipe ceremony, um, I felt was the best way to prepare myself for delivering this resolution. At the end of the ceremony, um, the MC of the gathering announced there would be um, another ceremony taking place several miles away on the site where that had uh, part of the site near Highway 6, where the pipeline company had already done some excavation and preparation for putting the pipeline in. That ceremony was going to be an eagle and condor ceremony based on a pro the eagle and condor prophecy, whereby um, indigenous peoples from the south and from the north unite. Um, and at that, that ceremony did take place on the site. Um, dancer, youth dancers and singers from uh, Argentina, indigenous youth from Argentina um, performed and did their ceremony and people from the Arctic Circle um, 
drummed and sang and danced their ceremony. At the conclusion of that, um, the police, oh, and just to back up, um, I was attending with my friend, attorney Patricia Hamill from Madison, who was out there um, doing legal support. I had had prior training as a, um, a legal observer back in the day when the Wisconsin uprising was happening and back in 2011, and we had the occupation of the Capitol. So I knew that my role was just to observe, um, not talk to anyone, just observe how the police interacted with people and the arrests, um, if any were, were to happen. So I had my camera with me. I had my bright green lawyers Guild, National Lawyers Guild legal observer hat on. I was clearly identified as a legal observer. I was not there to film the ceremony. I didn't film ceremony. My camera was trained on the um, to the south, where lines of police uh, police cars started coming in. So that's what I was there to videotape the police. Um, the ceremony concluded at a, uh, right after that, the police started driving to the site. The MC of the ceremony said, okay, our ceremony is concluded. Um, we have a police liaison going to talk to the police. Please leave the site peacefully. Go back up to the road. Go back to your cars if you're not prepared to take an arrest. There were 16 people um, who had prepared themselves to take uh, an arrest on trespassing as an act of civil disobedience in protection of the water. Um, on the site, there was a, a 16 poles of a teepee set up, wrapped around with uh, tobacco ties, prayer ties, and 16 people had sat down under that, uh, that teepee structure and begun praying. Grandmother Teresa Black Owl, who is a Chinupa or pipe carrier um, from the Lakota community, uh, lit her pipe and began doing uh, prayers with that group. Um, and so they were, I, in my mind, my camera was going to be focused on the, the interaction between the 16 and the police. So I was off to the side. I was well out of the way when the police came in. Um, they formed several lines, one line uh, in front of the TP, sort of blocking anyone else from going there or seeing there. And then another line closer to the road, which was formed almost entirely of Wisconsin um, law enforcement officials from the Wisconsin State Patrol, Dane County Sheriffs, and there were other Wisconsin, Wisconsin County Sheriffs there as well. So in essence, as police people were trying to leave, the police kettled a bunch of folks. And so prohibiting their, um, their ability to leave. I was, again, I was, my camera was trained on the police. I was expecting them to move back to start making arrests. Instead, uh, uh, someone who appeared to be commanding the line with a megaphone announced, if we touch you, you're under arrest. No sooner has he said that than he himself, the one with the megaphone, ran at me, um, grabbed my, the hand with my camera in it, Another deputy ran at me, and they kind of pulled me back towards the teepee, putting my hands behind my back. As my hands were behind my back, I was fiddling with the viewfinder to try to close it to make sure it was protected. This is a very nice camera I had, video camera I had. And that's when they yelled at me, now you're under arrest for destruction of evidence. Okay, I was uh, zip-tied and um, taken to, to the side. After a while, I looked around, I wondered where my camera was, and it was on the ground far away from the point at which I had given up um, possession of the camera. So I don't know how it got there on the ground or why. So that, that's the story of my arrest. Um, we went to jail. The jail. One deputy in the jail said, um, when we complained about having to be barefoot, not having socks, not having blankets, feeling cold, one deputy said, this is a jail built for 40 people, and there's 80 people in here now. Um, like I said, I personally was strip searched and made to take out my braids and um, not given socks or footwear. And um, one of the deputies sort of joked that they were going to go to Walmart and get us some socks because it was really important because of what quote unquote jail fungus, but you know, we were there without, you know, any of that. Um, eventually, right before we were released, we did get socks and, and sort of around midnight we got blankets. Um, 
And so, and so you were also strip searched, um, if I'm yes, correct. Yes, I was strip can you, searched. Can you, can you describe your, uh, what happened and your response to that? Well, it was, I felt like it was an attempt to humiliate us. Um, I was told to take off all my clothes, to squat and cough. Um, I, was, I wasn't allowed to, I asked um, if I could have my underwear back. She said, well, you can have your underpants back, but no bra because it has underwires. Um, I don't know. It, and these are for, mis again, misdemeanor charges. And, and, I'm being and it's, treated it's important to note that, um, you know, what you've described, many people have, who have been arrested, including the, the chairman of the Standing Rock Sioux, he was uh, subjected to the same uh, treatment. And, um, you know, many protesters um, or many um, water protectors and, and journalists have also uh, faced, uh, you know, severe charges. We mentioned a uh, filmmaker is facing 45 years in prison. Um, you know, some would say this is an effort to suppress free speech um, and also intimidate, um, intimidate people yes, from... Yes, and provoke. Yeah. And provoke, I would add, Jai Subli, because uh, another person to whom this happened was um, LaDonna Brave Bull, whose land the Sacred Stone Camp is on and who started the prayer, who went to ceremony and was given instructions about what to do and how to pray and how to be, um, you know, to protect the water. Um, her daughter was pulled over in a traffic stop. She wasn't even driving. She was a passenger. She was taken to jail, strip searched in front of three male deputies, put in, in jail naked. She was not given clothes to wear. She was made to stay in jail overnight naked. Okay? This is a provocation. This is not just humiliation. This is provocation. And the incendiary, inflammatory rhetoric used by the Morton County and Cass County sheriffs, um, and now the North Dakota congressional delegation to inflame, uh, to create an image of people as wild, lawless criminals um, is really causing an extremely dangerous situation right now, very dangerous situation, not based in reality, based just on spurious claims illegal actions by law enforcement as well as the um, prosecutor and now apparently congressional the North Dakota congressional delegation who is basing their request on federal assistance from the DOJ on a false story of um, a rancher supposedly saying that he had his cattle stolen and butchered and shot by arrows uh, by people in the camp that rancher has come forward and said his cattle were in a ravine, that that is not a substantiated claim, and yet con the congressional delegation of North Dakota is asking for federal assistance um, to bring in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more um, law enforcement officials from across the country. And, and uh, finally, at the same time that um you know, North Dakota has put out this call for additional law enforcement. You mentioned hundreds of additional law enforcement are going there. Um, the Dane County Sheriff withdrew the 13 law enforcement from the, from the area surrounding Madison that went to North Dakota. Um, now, he hasn't said it's because of your arrest, but you, you met with him um, since you've, you've gotten back. Describe what yeah. happened. Well, I met with him to ask him a series of questions, including what was the emergency you were responding to why did you make this decision without letting the county executive know, without letting anyone else in the community know that our local law enforcement was going out there? Um, I, I, ha I, again, I had a series of questions for him. He told me that he is friends with the Cass County Sheriff Laney and that he had been requested to go out there on August 10th. He went out there, he himself personally, Sheriff Mahoney, to give them training on the quote-unquote Dane County model of protecting people's First Amendment rights in, in highly charged emotional situations. He said that there was concern that some of the local sheriff deputies and police force uh, police officers were experiencing burnout and may not um, be in a right mental state to police the situation. So there was a request apparently uh, from Sheriff Laney for for Sheriff Mahoney to go out there and do some training about how to peacefully police 
people who are peacefully expressing their First Amendment rights to free speech. Um, he visited the camp, he said, and I asked him, was he in uniform? He said, no, he was in plain clothes, and that he, what he observed was a peaceful encampment of people. Um, then two and a half weeks ago, he got a call on a Friday evening from Sheriff Laney, I believe, requesting officers. He then related to me that um, he ensured that the contract that he signed with, I don't know if it was the state of North Dakota or directly um, or through the state of Wisconsin to North Dakota, uh, he said ensured that every single expense, including the backfill expense for um, replacing the missing deputies in our local um, jurisdiction, benefits, insurance, liability, all of that was going to be paid by North Dakota. And then he sent them out. And he, he said to me that he, he hoped that his deputies would be a, a force for good and a force to help sort of ease tensions. Um, he mentioned that in his Dane County model, um, they um, would not use riot gear. They would not be... Um, they would, they, their model is to engage with the people, to talk to them, to learn about what their concerns are. Um, what I saw on October 10th, Indigenous Peoples Day, the day I was arrested, and the day that even the, the, the um, protectors appointed police liaison was arrested without even negotiating in, that didn't happen. I asked Sheriff Mahoney about um, could his his small contingent of deputies actually police in a separate way from the unified command that was commanding the operation. He wasn't able to give me a good answer about that. Um, on this past Saturday, one of his personnel was witnessed um, at a site where people were praying um, in a sort of command position. In, and, and during that action, um, a sniper all dressed in black, as well as armored vehicles were called to the situation. So although we in, in Dane County and Madison have seen a, a more humane style of policing from our officers, they weren't behaving in that way. They were forming a line to kettle people and not let people leave who wanted to leave on October 10th. Um, they were participating in actions that resulted in human rights violations of people. One of the arrests of a young woman um, on, uh, on October 10th was brutal. She um, was picked up by her hair. She was slammed on the ground. She was sat on uh, her, a niece of a deputy, on one on her neck, one on the small of her back. She was pushed down the hill um, into the transport van that I was sitting in by a Marathon County, Wisconsin deputy and slammed into the van. Um, so, and these are law enforcement officers from Wisconsin, from Dane County, helped create, were part of the situation in which these uh, abuses occurred. And it, it's, just, it's shameful. All right. We want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. Thanks. And go to therealnews.com for our ongoing coverage of the standoff at Standing Rock between the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Standing Rock Sioux and their supporters. Thank you so much for joining us.